here we are in the final step of the character chapter and at the end of this step you're going to have the character in your level playable i promise so let's get that set up we're now going to close the animation blueprint we're done with that for now and we need to create our character blueprint so what we're going to do is just go to our content level and to the blip character folder and we have our blip bps area now before we do that we've got a bit of a dilemma because we've been working with this character so far and we've put some logic on it we've done some development here so this character is the one that takes the damage so if we um, go there you can see the damage is happening we can also pick up the key card and we can open the door if we were to create a brand new blueprint what would happen there is that we would have to set up all that stuff again which i don't want to do so what we'll do is duplicate that character blueprint and then we'll only have to modify things a little bit rather than building all the same logic again because we don't learn anything new from that so here's what we're going to do we're going to go to the content folder and into the third person folder here this contains a blueprint folder and this is where that character currently resides and we need to duplicate it so let's right click on that and we'll duplicate perfect and it's currently called bp underscore third person character I'm going to call it BP underscore blip character so that I know which one it is. Smashing. And then I'll just make sure it's saved so that it makes it a bit easier to move it because I don't want to leave it in this folder. So what I'm going to do is you can see I've got a folder structure in my project here and I can drag and drop this into the blip BPs folder. And then when I let go, it'll ask me do I want to move it, copy it or do an advanced copy. I would like to move it. So I'll select that option. And then when I go back to my blip character folder and the blip BPs, I now have a character blueprint. Okay, so let's open that up. There's all the logic we have created previously. And what I'm going to do is go to the viewport and we can see that we've got this character here, which is called the Quinn simple character. You can see that that's listed there. And what I want to do is replace that with our character. So let's open that drop down there and we're going to choose blip mesh and you'll see that does that for us it's pretty good but there's no animations playing we should be seeing the idle now and the reason for that is because the animation section here says animation mode animation blueprint that's what we want but it's using or trying to use the quinn animation blueprint which we don't want so we're going to change that to blip underscore and in bp and then that will start to idle which means that we're on to a winner so let's just compile and save that. So you can see that I've got this blueprint here just docked alongside my level. And that means that I can go backwards and forwards because what we're going to do now is test this. But the point is that it won't work. I'll show you. So if we click on play now, it's not working. And the reason is we've duplicated the character blueprint, but we haven't told the game to use that blueprint. It's still using the previous one. And where you can tell it to do that is in what's called a game mode blueprint. So if we just go back into our content drawer and I go back to that third person blueprints folder, there's a game mode. It's called third person game mode. And that is what Unreal Engine is currently using to tell it what we want to do. So let's duplicate that. I'm going to right click and duplicate. I'm going to rename it to BP underscore blip game mode. Blip. There we go. And then just like I did before, I'm going to save that and I'm going to drop it into my blip BPs folder. And then let's move it. There we go. And then go back into that folder. And let's open up that game mode. So game mode basically just contains a lot of settings that we can set up for any particular game. And under default pawn class, it's currently choosing third person character. We would like it to choose blip. Where is he? So BP underscore blip character. And that's all we need to change. So let's compile, save, and we can close the game mode. Let's test it again. But unfortunately, the point of testing this is it still doesn't work. There you go. We're still seeing Quinn. Why are we still seeing Quinn? The reason is that the game doesn't know that we want it to use that new game mode. It's still using the old one. So let's tell it that we would like it to use the new one. And we can do that in the project settings. So let's go to edit, project settings. 
And what we'll then do is just go to Maps and Modes, just on the left hand side here, and there's your default game mode there. So let's change that to Blip Game Mode. That should do it. While we're also in here, we could also make one other change, which is the startup map. Currently, if you've closed this down at any point and reopened it, you've had to reopen your level to get back to this because it will default to the third person map. So we can also change that to our level. So I'm currently on this ship chapter five begin because I'm creating different levels so that you can access them as you go through the series. You might just have one level though, that's fine. So I'm gonna set both of these to chapter five begin for now, although I'll, cr I'll try and keep updating these as we go through. Uh, but that's just an extra. The main thing I wanna change is the game mode. So now we can close that window. Let's test it now. So you can now see that we are choosing that game mode and that game mode is choosing this character. So we can now, using the W, A, S and D keys, move the character around. And that is currently defaulting to the run animation. And we can also press spacebar and that will make the character jump. So that's pretty good so far, but there's a downside. If I go and stand in the fire, no damage is being taken. If I go and try and pick up the key card, not happening either and so I can't get through the door. So the blueprints are still there but they're no longer working and we're going to have to make a change to that just to make it work. So let's go into the blueprint and figure that out. So back into our blip character blueprint, here it is. Let's go to the event graph and let's work out why it's not working. And actually if we were to go and look through this, nothing here is the problem. The problem is in the blueprints that we've created. So let's go to our blueprints folder. And I will show you with uh, the key card what we need to change, and then we'll do the other two. So it's here. On begin overlap, it checks is it the third person character? And then it will do everything else. It's no longer the third person character, is it? It's now the blip character. So we need to change that. So what we'll do is I'm going to drag out of other actor and we're going to cast to blip and we want blip character. And what I'll do is just copy what we've got here. So as blip character, we need to set has key to true. And then we can connect all that up. So I'm going to delete these two here, bring these in. like that and save. So now everything should work because it's looking for the right character in that blueprint. So let's just confirm that that does work. So we'll click on play and we're just gonna run at the key card. Excellent. So that's now working. We just need to sort the fire and the door and then we have completed it. So let's go back into our blueprints. We're gonna open the door and we've got the same problem here. It's casting to the third person character. So let's replace what we need to replace here. Other actor, we're gonna do cast to blip character. And as that third person character, we needed to do has key. So we need to get has key. Like that. And then we can connect everything else back up. So let's delete that guy and that guy. This is now gonna go into here and this can go into here and we'll connect those up. And so we've now just changed the character again. So compile and save that one. And let's just check it because it's always good to make sure it's working. So we'll get the key card and then the door should open. Perfect. And so we've now just got to do the fire. Oh, hang on. I got a little bit carried away there, I think. Let's go back into key card. No, sorry, into door. Closed door isn't done, is it? Oh, I nearly made a right boo-boo there. Okay, so let's sort that out. So, cast to blip. As blip, we need to do has key. And then we can delete these two. And get them connected up. So connect that one into there, and that one into there, and that one into there. 
Perfect. So let's compile and say that now we can do the fire. So fire damage. And it's just the same check that we need to do. We just also need to make sure that we change the thing that we do as the third person character. So let's do cast to blip. So blip character, make sure you don't get the game mode. And then as blip character, we've done two things, look. So we need to do those as well. So we're going to do set in fire. And we're doing that as true. And then we also need to do the fire damage. Like that. And then I'm just going to need to tidy all this up. So we'll delete these three. One, two, three. Oh, and get rid of that guy as well. So to get rid of the wires, if I've not already shown you this, you just hold Alt and click on them and that will get rid of the wires. So there's fire damage. We want to set that there. There we go. And then we're going to have this happening. And this happening. Connect it all up. And then I just want to tidy that up a little bit because it upsets me. So we'll put in the reboot nodes again. Perfect. So that's the top half done. Let's just do that with the bottom half. So when we're out of the fire, we just need to set that to false. So we're going to do cast to blip so as bp blip character we are going to set in fire to false and then we're all good so let's delete and delete move this guy up to here connect everything up compile save and test everything so play First thing that should happen is we should be able to take damage. That is working. We should be able to pick up the key card. That is working. And we should be able to open the door. And the door should close when we walk away from it. And then as a bonus, uh, we'll leave him stood in there for a second until he dies. And you can see the ragdoll works. Now he's set up a little bit differently to the previous character. So his parts do fall to pieces. But I quite like that. That's a bonus. Um, so we'll leave that as it is. So well done for making it this far. Look at what you've already achieved. You've built an entire playable game from scratch. In the next step, we're going to continue the learning. So I can't wait to see you for more in Chapter 6. Thanks for watching and supporting the channel. If you'd like to help me create more content like this, please consider becoming a patron on Patreon. The contributions I get through Patreon make a huge difference in keeping this channel going. Remember to like, comment and subscribe to make sure you don't miss my upcoming tutorials. Your support and engagement mean the world to me and help my channel continue to grow. Thanks again and I'll see you in the next one.